welcome back uh, to Youth Plus Radio. Uh, today I'm joined by uh, quite a phenomenal young man who I've known for a bit, but is doing some big things. Mr. Wayne. Hey, what's up? Hi, welcome. Karibu. Tell us about yourself a bit. Who is who is Wayne? Okay. Um, thank you, Fred. Uh, thank you for having me here. So I'm called Wayne. Um, Wayne Zhao. Um, I'm based in Kenya. So... Um, I'm a creative, um, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I have a business called Rhyme Collection yeah. in Maktaba Studio. So Rhyme, Col- Rhyme, Cloth- Rhyme Collection is all about vintage clothing, and Maktaba Studio is all about um, books. So if you like art books, um, architecture mm. books, comics, um, animes, that's what I focus on. Mm. Yeah. How long have you been doing uh, Rhyme for? So Rhyme... Um, Hence the name collection. So I started mm. collecting um, in 2016. Mm. And then I started making it a proper business in 2018. Mm. Yeah. And how, how are you finding or how has it been so far? Is it like a crowded space or is it more like there's, there's room for like vintage clothing and stuff? Um, honestly, I still feel like it's a new, it's a new thing. Mm. Um, everyone is selling T-shirts, branded T-shirts, but people still don't understand what vintage clothing is. Right. Um, so I think the main thing is now trying to educate people on vintage clothing because um, everyone can sell like regular T-shirts, cool T-shirts, but you know, understanding and actually taking time to uh, educate yourself on what vintage clothing is, yeah. uh, that's a process. And mm. honestly, I don't feel like so many people understand that and in, in, in that space. Mm. Yeah. Why, why vintage clothing? Like, is it just your passion for it, your your affinity towards vintage clothing that you started collecting and then was like you wanted to share that love for vintage clothing with other people or was it driven by like a market need or yeah. guys just seeing your clothes and be like, yo, where can I get yeah. something like that? Um, so how it started was, um, so after my first intern internship, um, so I was from Strathmore. Mm. So you know, people kept on asking me, like, where am I getting my clothes? Um, and then I realized, you know, that's a business opportunity. Um, mm. So at that time, I was getting new clothes, and most of my clothes are from Isli. Mm. And, you know, clearly, if you know, Isli clothes are not legit. Um, you might have them for three months, five months, and then, you know, maybe they have an issue, maybe fading, or maybe they fit. Um, and then I realized, um, you know, the quality of vintage clothing and also... Uh, the thing about new clothes, everyone, you, you might look like a copy-paste of someone. Mm. So the advantage of now vintage clothing is that, you know, you can never find the same thing. Yeah. So if I can find maybe like a Led Zeppelin t-shirt, it's very hard for someone to replicate that. Mm. And also it's very, um, I think for me, it's also it's affordable um, in comparison to buying new clothes. Right. And also... Um, for me, I think it's an excitement of, of digging for these clothes because, you know, it's like, like I always say, it's like um, you're looking for diamonds or gold mm. um, when you're finding these clothes. Um, in regards to these other new clothes, like at you might find this Dior or um, Prada. Mm. And honestly, if you just look at new clothes, you, you, you can just tell the, if they're, the quality and if they're authentic. Mm. So for me... Um, I decided let me just focus on vintage clothing and also not so many people at that time were focusing on vintage clothing. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you, how do you sell? Do you sell it online or you have a, a store? Do you do a lot of shows um, and expos? Okay. Um, so, mostly I've been selling online. Mm-hmm. Um, and then during COVID, I tried to have, I, I opened up a shop um, in Rongai. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I realized that people are coming to my house more than the shop. Uh, so 2020, 2021, around May, I closed it. And then I decided, let me just focus fully on online. Yeah. Um, but for now, I sell online. And then I do a lot of um, pop-up markets and flea markets. Right. Um, I also have some partnership with other guys. Um, like there was one, but it ended, with guys called Between the Line. Mm. Um, they're a bookshop. They were a bookshop. At village market mm-hmm. so i'll give them like my, my products on consignment and then when they sell we just discuss on the markup yeah uh i want to i want to get into that partnership how did you sort of not even get an agreement with them but even just reaching out to them was it yeah. just walking into the store or um, funny thing i just sent them a dm <laughs> oh really yeah, i just sent them a dm um and they were 
they were kind enough to respond. Yeah. So once they did respond, I, uh, I think we I sent them some samples, mm-hmm. and then that's how it started. It's yeah. interesting because I mean uh, partnerships are a great way to scale, but then I think um, as as young businesses or young people in business, it's normally like a a challenge, I guess, figuring out first of all how to identify a potential partner, and then yeah. once you have identified them, um, trying to figure out where to begin that conversation from. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, it's a great, yeah. great way to scale because basically you're able to increase your revenue without having to do all the legwork. True, true. And, and also, it was a, a partnership that did actually make sense because mm. um, you see them, they were, they're a bookshop and they're selling comics right. and anime merchandise, yeah. but they're not selling um, curated T-shirts and, and maybe socks because mm. they also sell socks at the, and cups. Yeah. So they were not doing that. And I was like, you know, let me try try out because at the same time, you know, it never hurts to try. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, and the worst thing they can tell you is no. Mm. So, yeah. You know, it's it was a perfect fit. It was actually it was a very perfect fit. Yeah. Um, and even with that, I was able to to get into their 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 audience, like some of their customer base. Right. And that was actually a good thing for me. Yeah. yeah. And I was even doing some pop ups there at the same time. Like, um, there was a day, there was a Star Wars day. Mm. So I took all my collection of Star Wars stuff, and then I did like a pop up just outside the store, mm. yeah, which was. A good experience for me. Yeah. yeah. Was that your first one? Yeah, that was my first one. Yeah. <laughs> it was my first one. Were there nerves going into it? I'm a... Come again? Were you nervous going into it being uh, your first yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, I was nervous. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think I made much sales, but, um, you know, just putting myself out there. And, you know, even guys came, um, mm. even if it was 10 people, they still came and they supported my brand. Mm. It's the same way these rappers always say, like, they started off, you know, maybe 20 people came. Mm. But you know now they're feeling stadium. Yeah, so yeah, inevitably I also see myself maybe in that path, but not that big path. But they have my path. Slowly. Yeah. I mean, shout out to friends who support their friends' businesses. True, true, so. true, true. Yeah, big, big shout out to friends who <laughs> friends and family actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's Rhyme Collection, which is the vintage clothing, yeah. and then there's Maktaba yeah. Studios, Maktaba which Studio. is the the books, comics. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did that get started? Because it yeah. seems like you're really doing very well with, with the rhyme. Yeah, with the rhyme. Um, once again, uh, based on my nature, mm. I'm not one person to do, to do just one thing. Yeah. Um, so I can't just do one thing. Um, so I try to do multiple stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, once again, um, rhyme, I, rhyme, sorry, Maktaba was a complementary of rhyme, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, I have like themes and pillars of what I do. Mm. So if it's architecture, if it's design, if it's graphic design, um, or if it's comics, anime. So my t-shirts and my clothing follow mm. that theme. So it's um, so basically Maktaba just borrowed a leaf from that now in terms of books. Yeah. Yeah. So so I kind of sell more or less what I sell in the clothing, but in book version. Right. Yeah. And where, where, do, you, where do you get them from? Um, so for me, I, I have a principle of um, all my stuff has to be thrifted mm-hmm. yeah, or locally sourced. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, I'll move away from the locally sourced because um, as I grow, my also my what I'm looking for can't be managed here, can't be satisfied right. here locally. So yeah. I love to go abroad to look for them. But with the element of having um, second hand, Right. Um, because obviously, for me, the main thing is price point. Mm-hmm. Um, if I buy something new, I'll not want to like put a big markup for my customers. So mm. the advantage of thrifted stuff, you might buy something thrift, and the markup might not be excessive, but you know it's something reasonable. And you're still getting yeah, it, yeah. good enough value from yeah. from that product. Yeah. Books, man. It, it look. It seems like physical. Books or reading physical books is yeah. sort of like a lost, a lost art or yeah, a lost yeah. love. Yeah. Um, do you have any challenges sort of trying to bridge that gap between the, the real authenticity of holding a book in your hand yeah. vis-a-vis this this sort of I guess need for either yeah. having a phone in your hand or a tab? Yeah. Yeah. So so for me, how I view even my books are are they like um. They're like art pieces. Mm. Um, it's like when you see something, you just need to have it. Yeah. Um, even for me, I, I might not say I'm the biggest reader, but there are some books when I see, I'm like, I need that book because 
maybe it's the inspiration. And the thing about books at the same time is um, when you just open a book and you can see it visually, mm -hmm. you know, there's some things you might not see it based on the phone, yeah. like the details, maybe the copy, the typography yeah. might be very different compared to uh, a digital version. A digital version. Yeah. So, and then just like I said, like my books, I find them like the collectibles, like mm. it's a book you want to have in your, in your house. Like if yeah. you have guests, you know, um, someone might see like, um, a Van Gogh book and they're wondering, hey, where do you get this Van Gogh book? Or, mm. hey, who, how do you know about Van Gogh? Or they're more like um, conversation starters. Mm -hmm. So la someone might see um, like um, like an Andy Warhol book mm. and then you're like, how do you know about Wandy, Andy Warhol? So even what, what I even try and do for my business is it's normally like, if you know, you know. Yeah, it's it's not for everyone, mm. uh, but you know, if you like, if you appreciate taste and style, then I, I feel like um, yeah, you might, and, you and, might and like my stuff. Culture also, man, because exactly, actually, even even pop culture is a very big thing. Um, mm. You know, because um, also also for me, I get a lot of my inspiration from. Uh, my business, there are a lot of inspiration is from like my interest. You know, mm. if it's architecture, you know, if it's movies, like if it's. Quentin Tarantino movies, right. you know, if it's um, uh, Morgan Freeman, you know, or if yeah. it's um, if we're talking about rock music bands, you know, the two thousands mm. or the nineties. So that's why I get a lot of my inspiration. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Um, so there's something I want to get into, but before before that, um, what was the transition like for you going from being employed into business? Yeah, because. Um, there's normally this thing a lot of us do where, yes, we have a job, but we have a yeah. side hustle. Yeah. So you choosing your side hustle as your main hustle. Yeah. What was that transition like? Yeah. Um, were you feeling nervous? Were you feeling anxious about making that, mm. that transition? Um, so even, even when I was, I was being employed, I always had the mentality that, yes, I have a contract, but I'm self-employed. Mm. Um, like, you know, you don't have to be told what you have to do when you're at work. You already have an idea of what you have to do. So yeah. I think even for me, when I was entering employment, it was more like, how do I learn and um, how do I also position myself in that situation? Mm -hmm. um, but definitely um, transitioning from now my full business, it was a, it was a, it was a, it wasn't a, a, an easy decision to be honest. Um, mm. But uh, I'll be honest with you; it's it's kind of paid off. I, yeah. I can see the the growth. Mm -hmm. um, but also the other thing I, I think I can always tell people is um, if you're ever growing, if you're ever trying to grow your business, uh, also have some skills that you know they can always um, assist you. Like yeah. at least with the skills I've gained through employment. In case anything goes wrong, and I'm not mm. saying it will go wrong, I can always go back there. Right. And once again, um, like with our industry, the one we're in, yeah. um, it's think of it like your business. It's an application of what you've learned, mm. right? We because yeah. we, we're, we're in the advertising industry, yeah. and like even my business, you know, I have to put in creativity. Mm. I have to have like a brand uh, brand tone. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to have like a brand colors i might not right. be following them exact to the to the dot but you know it's application of you know um yeah, yeah what you've you've come across so you basically it's just it's more like a classroom of sorts yeah um because i feel like there's always like definitely there's there's people that are really engineered towards employment and really thrive in that environment yeah, yeah. But there's some who find themselves in that environment, but there's still an itch. Like there's a yeah. there's an itch that you really want to scratch, and True. you really get that fulfillment or that vindication once you've left and are running your own business or your True. own enterprise. True, um, totally, totally, and I agree with you on that. And um, shout out to someone called Robert Nganga, mm. um, because Robert knew I I um, I had a, I have my businesses running, mm. but you know Robert is very open minded and he was like even with the clients he'll tell the clients that you know I, uh, Wayne, Wayne works with you but Wayne has other businesses mm. um, oh, because that's because you also um, during COVID you tend to everyone came to the re realization that you know you you have to do multiple things yeah. you know, you can't just stick to one job yeah. and you know it's so sad now that covid has gone and now we are going back to the old default thing. settings yeah default <laughs> settings it's so sad because you know employers should actually even allow you to to have your own business 
and you know that doesn't mean that you'll be um you won't be doing your tasks at work mm-hmm. you know because i feel like if you if you are self employed or if you have a business there's a certain mentality you have that yeah. you know you have to put your business um you have to grow your business but at the same time you also have to respect your employer yeah fidelity to yeah. your contract yeah. um it's actually very interesting because the other day there was a report that came out i don't know if you saw it um i think it was in the US they were testing out um must have been 30 or 33 organizations were testing out a 4 day work week mm. and they actually proved to be more productive yeah, yeah. um they were making more money um yeah. even employees whenever they were locked in like yeah. they were truly more efficient more effective in yeah. their roles yeah um so yeah but it's it's very rare to find either an, an employer or client who yeah. understands that you have that maturity to do your job but also but, take but care but also of, let's be real um, um even when you're at work you know you your your contract says you have 8 hours but if you're to <laughs> cut down the the number of hours you're productive they're either 3 to 4 hours yeah that's right true. <laughs> and something i i learned when i was working from home is if you can give me at least 3 hours or 4 hours of my day i can at least complete uh, i can i can complete all my tasks for 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 the job yeah. and then the other hours at least i'm able to grow my business yeah uh, but in essence you know that can, doesn't actually okay <laughs> i'm normally very surprised whenever i see um office environments that are very strict on the clocking at 8 leave at 5 yeah. which is fine yeah. uh it's very pedantic but how much work is actually getting done between true, those true, hours so 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 um yeah man i mean it's, it's interesting it's about value creation and value extraction true which i think needs to be the focus rather mm. than how long is xyz sitting at their seats <laughs> staring at their computer it's, um, i think it's a very traditional um, approach with that um and hopefully i guess um with with more progressive organizations you can give people opportunity like mm. you know even if they can give you even capital to grow your business mm. you know that that can be a good thing but anyway yeah that needs a real shift of mindsets yeah true true um so with the businesses both rhyme and and maktaba yeah and there's also maktaba collectibles, collectibles yeah. yeah tell us a, b- a bit about that one so maktaba collectibles um so um so that focuses on toys figurines mm. and cards and puzzles wow. so if it's playing cards but maybe they have these dc characters right, so the or they have marvel characters yeah. um and then toys like dc characters marvel characters um mm. nickelodeon cartoon network mm. um disney um and then puzzles at the same time like playing puzzles so that one um i i created it into a business um this year mm-hmm. maybe even three months ago oh yeah because i you know the the how i start my business is i start from collecting mm. so i make sure i have a I have a collection and then with this collection i'll be like okay i have an idea of where i want to go right and then it's it's a very risky way to to start <laughs> but it's um it's like the way Steve Jobs says like connecting the dot backwards and then right. you figure out the path yeah. so i've also seen it's growing um not so many people are in that space mm. of figurines and toys um so it's also yeah it's also a good space for me and with all three of these um you take part in these conventions and and expos yeah. so like i i saw you at Nikon recently Nikon, yeah. what was that like Uh, it was a, it's a it was a very good opportunity for me um to connect with um with like-minded people mm. um because you know sometimes when i go for some pop-up markets um it's very family oriented right. um so you know selling for them like comics or gaming stuff is very hard mm. but at least during Nikon i was able to connect with the right audience and the right community wow. so i think it did a, a good thing for my for my brand and my business and Nikon is actually quite a significant event is yeah, it N- Nikon Nikon is very big um it was my first Nikon though mm-hmm. but Nikon is a very big event um it happens i think once a year or maybe two times a year mm-hmm. and honestly they they really support um like um the Kenyan creatives and also um yeah. the Kenyan businesses um who are selling like comics or merch for 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 gaming or anime so mm. yeah and i love i love the kind of 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 i guess emphasis they're putting around that entire sort of um 
category or sector because yeah. a lot of the times people normally assume it's just for enjoyment just for yeah. pleasure but yeah. there's actually like revenue models can be built around gaming around true. comic books around true, true, true. you've already entire. you've already seen like abroad how they're doing like um um if you if you like gaming academies mm. um i think also the hair has one yeah um like you come into an academy um like and then you have tournaments against other other teams Mm. Um, so also that space is growing also in Kenya the space for gaming is growing very big even gaming developers um and animators it's yeah. it's really impressive to see what people are doing yeah yeah um and yeah you can you can look at even kina um i know fatboy and not at fatboy animation mm-hmm. you can already see like how they 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 took the animation segment to a different level and you can see how they're growing from the first yeah. fiber yeah. Uh, commercial to what they're, they're doing exactly. now like and they're the, really the storytelling yeah yeah the storytelling it's, it's is really dope yeah it's really mm-hmm. dope so even the space of actually another space that is growing is the space of um comics or oh, like uh, actual uh, writing yeah, like i realized i realized during nikon how so many people are interested to to they have ideas of comics mm. and they want to execute them So even you could find guys are coming to Nikon just to learn yeah. and to connect with um, other comic artists. Yeah. So that space is really growing of guys creating like actual um Kenyan content. Um so um I'd mentioned earlier um so under Maktaba I'm selling um Kenyan creative stuff. Mm. So and Kenyan comics. So one of the guys I'm selling for they call Avandu. Avandu, Avandu Studio. Yeah. So like the lead um creative there is called Salim. He recently did something with Marvel. Oh wow. Yeah, with Marvel. Um so it just shows you how that space is really growing. Yeah. Um and also funny thing is you know all these international brands are definitely paying attention. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I think there's something called Crunchy Crunchy Roll. Mm-hmm. Um it's for it's an it's um a sighting it's a site for you can stream like anime anime oh. uh, animes. So that space is really growing big like so many Kenyans have subscriptions for that. Yeah. Guys actually paying it's like Netflix guys yeah. actually paying for that. So it already shows you how that space is growing and definitely these guys are taking note of that. Mm. So hopefully in the next few years now this case the next conventions in Kenya will be very very big. And um, yeah. yeah like I was being told like in South Africa the expos are four days. Wow. Yeah, us guys are doing two days. Mm. Yeah, so Yeah. Um is it something that um needs like investment so for example for like Nikon was there like a lot of private sector or public mm. sector in- inevitably honestly, honestly inevitably you'll need investors um mm. cuz think about it like getting a space like Sarit Expo just renting it out you can imagine right. how much it will cost. Yeah. So you definitely need um investors for mm. that. Uh but now the challenge is um do you like if you're creating or curating an event and you have investors so who's your main audience right you know what i mean yeah. um because you might find now you're focusing more on the investors more yeah. but your actual customers are maybe the vendors or the cast or the guys paying for tickets mm. so you kind of neglect them mm-hmm. so sometimes that's a challenge of getting investor money you have to right. compromise kidogo but yeah I I guess that's where picking the right investor comes in. True, uh one true. that will actually believe in in, in the vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like even for me I've, I've been so many people have told me they want to invest in my business but I'm like no, it's okay. Oh, you said no. Yeah. It was is that was that an easy decision for you to be like very easy decision. Yeah, yeah I can't allow someone I can't um based on where I have. Mm. I can't just allow someone to just come And Coming then they'll be telling everything. me and they'll be coming there and telling me their ideas that he, he need to change this you need to change that you know that mm-hmm. the advantage of being my oh. boss is that I'm the boss mm-hmm. I'm the creative director I'm the copywriter um I'm the content creator <laughs> sometimes I do the delivery you know sometimes I do the washing mm. so you know my role is so You're everything yeah, I'm everything so <laughs> um and and sometimes i feel like not people will understand my business mm. yeah and that's the hard part even up to now it's not so many people won't understand my business yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cuz cuz um like i told you i try and work backwards mm. like i try like right now i might have i might buy so much stock that might not sell mm. immediately but i know eventually it'll sell mm-hmm. cuz you know my idea is like the next year i'm hoping i might have a store Mm-hmm. and at least showcase myself because it's 
it's my 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 house is really <laughs> it's not functional now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your house is like your warehouse. Yeah, like I have I can say I have close to 5000 5000 t-shirts. Wow. Yeah. Um the books I can't even count the books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the toys are now taking over. But also the other thing I'm also trying to grow um sell like records. Oh, like the vinyls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like vinyls. I've there's a huge demand for that. So I was like, you know, let me let me check it out. But it's very hard to find vinyls. So that means I have to now look for old people, <laughs> you know. So yeah. uh, actually so enjoy listening to my folks who, um have LPs. Right? And then and the the sound it's so much better than it's anything India. you're getting these days. Yeah. It's there's a, there's an appreciation and I guess that's what you're saying like your business is very It's for those who get it yeah, like and also it's it's a, it's a nostalgia. Yeah. Like um you might find like a Cartoon Network t-shirt and then you remember Ed and Ed you're like damn. <laughs> you know those are the things that you grew up in. You know Saturday that next, at 7 uh, a.m. Yeah. on Club Kiboko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. man. We actually had uh, last week we had a gentleman named Wango okay. and he actually films on actual film not ah, digital. Nice. Yeah so it's That's impressive. like there's a very that appreciation mm-hmm. I guess is 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 what and then and then I don't know also you've seen um like as we as we become more developed mm. we are also trying to go back to to our roots or yeah. the, the the old thing like it's yeah. it's, it's funny also how fashion just revolves you know mm-hmm. like fashion always revolves it's it's I can't say it's pro- okay kind of progresses but it always revolves it goes like, back it's like a cycle yeah, like like right now we're in the era of baggy clothes Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and you remember baggy clothes in some few years or not nothing. It was all about how skinny can yeah. your clothes be, and, how and, fitting. And right now, if you see someone wearing skinny clothes, you're like, wait, what's wrong? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's just the same way. Like um, like even in in in, in just I guess in life in general, like even mm. your your Duango, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, the way he's going back to film. You know, it's yeah. these digital cameras, but it's going back to film. Yeah, you know, it's the same way. Um, digital art is big, being is big, mm-hmm. but um, physical art is also bigger. Actual, yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah, there's a different sort of. I guess it's the the, the personal involvement or the personal transitioning of of yourself mm-hmm. and your your being into mm-hmm. that piece of art. Like um, like right now, me, I'm looking for a Motorola Razor. You wow, know, the razor phones. Yeah, yeah, man. Because you know, you might. It's very hard to find them, or it's very hard to find the iPods. Mm. You the know, older, yeah. like the first one of the first. And, few and they have such vibes to them, you know. But it's very hard to find them, you know. Mm. So because it's Spotify, but I'd rather right. have my own <laughs> iTunes, you know, with my iPod there. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, it's very interesting. Um, the whole idea of vintage, I guess. For those who actually understand and would would be your customers, it yeah. goes back to, I guess, who you are and your passions and mm. the things that make you happy, make you feel good. Mm. Um, so whether that's the t-shirt you're wearing on your back or the collectibles that you're having at your yeah. home or the book you're reading, yeah, it's, um, it's sorry to cut you, but it's yeah. for example like if I see someone wearing our, let's say our, I can't say a Nirvana because Nirvana is common. But if I can see someone wearing like a Led Zeppelin T-shirt, mm. I'll be like, hmm. I know, I know, I know what you're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, um, like on Saturday, I saw this lady. She was maybe in her forties, mm-hmm. but she was wearing a Nirvana T-shirt. Wow. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> I see you. I see you. You know, because yeah. you know, you can always tell maybe the way this person thinks is very different, or mm. maybe their interest is very different. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um so you do you also do shows and pop-ups and and mm-hmm. stuff which are some of the ones where guys can find you so you can find me at organic farmers market um you can find me like um when does your show come out uh wednesday wednesday so yeah. they might not they might not um, ah for the event tomorrow yeah so like um on december 3rd and 4th um, so I'll be at um Rizabo. that's on saturday At the same time on Saturday I'll be at um, Craft Kenya with to be at Gecko. Um and then on Sunday I'll be at um Pop Up and Chill at Riverside. Mm-hmm. And also I'll be at Craft Kenya at the same time at Gecko. Mm. So yeah, you can Wow, be, man, you have a busy weekend. <laughs> yeah, man. And you know, honestly you have to take advantage of them um because yeah. you know we're heading towards January. Yeah. So that means um the pop-up market won't be as vibrant. Mm-hmm. So 
I think it's my opportunity to to take advantage. I'll also, I'll also be at an Nairobi flea market mm. um, December 10th. Um, it's at Anzana, Anzana Gardens mm. in Kare. Okay. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. That, that's a lot of movement activity. Yeah, because... Like, what, what keeps you going throughout, like, such a hectic schedule? Um, obviously, could have to pay, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, it's... Um, it's just putting myself out there um, mm. because, you know, I, I feel like I have some really dope stuff mm-hmm. and I need to share them with people and I also need to recover my money. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, business is about yeah. uh, the bottom line. Yeah. But I mean, there must be some <clears throat> very deep, deep passion mm. for you to like keep up with this for what, six years now? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Honestly, it's the excitement, man. Mm. It's the excitement for me. Um, like if I find something, honestly, it's it's like a, you're a kid. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's better than um, it's better than maybe working at a job and and maybe your boss parts you for a good job. But you know, for me, when I find this stuff, um, and then the other thing is, it's like kaizen, continuous improvement. Yeah. Um, like probably what I'm doing this year, I'll end up improving on it. The following year, yeah. So that's the other thing about like my business; it's continuous improvement. Mm. Yeah, that's a good detail. Not just for business, just even for personal life. Mm. Um, becoming a better business person, becoming a better yeah man, and also also man. the other thing is, um, as much as all this is fun, I enjoy doing this, but mm. I also consider myself a businessman. Mm. Yeah, like um, like at the same time I'm doing this, but I'm a I think like a businessman, like right. um. You know, I do my research definitely, um, uh, and then I also have different business models. Mm. So yeah. So what's what's next for for you? Uh, whether it's with Rhyme or whether it's with mm. Maktaba, are you looking um, at yeah. s- branching out to different countries, yeah. different parts of Kenya? Okay. Um, definitely, I wanna open a store mm. um, this coming year, um, and then definitely, I, I have not really tapped into the Kenyan market properly. So mm-hmm. I really want to tap in, in, into it properly. Yeah. So that means maybe going for pop-up markets, maybe if it's in Mombasa mm. um, or out of Nairobi. Yeah. Um, and definitely run more ads. Mm. Um, so now I want to do like proper, proper marketing in town because I've just been running social ads, but now mm-hmm. I have a website. Mm-hmm. So now I want to run maybe like um, search ads or maybe... Uh-huh. Um, work on my SEO, mm-hmm. um, definitely improve on my website at the same time. Yeah. Um, and maybe in the next few years, I'm hoping to branch out of Kenya because mm. um, I've realized I also have a fan base in Tanzania. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, I think also TZ can be a good space for me. Yeah, um, yeah and also, also I think for me, the key thing would be partnerships. Mm-hmm. Um, how can I partner with maybe guys out of Kenya, mm. um, like maybe put my products there. Um, but then the other thing is I want to have my own like products. Mm-hmm. Um, something I didn't mention is I also have, I have DIYs. Mm. DIYs. So, so normally I take like, um, like I can take a handbag. Yeah. So let's say I might take like a Fendi, Fendi handbag, which is messed up. Mm-hmm. And then I might recycle it and uh, into a jacket. Like I may oh. take a jacket and take the cool pieces and fix them. Yeah. Or I may take a, a a bag and then make a wallet out of it. Yeah. So I also do a lot of recycling, but I've mm. been slacking on it. Um, so that's interesting. so that's another thing I wanna do. Like I wanna create my own products, but mm. through the element of recycling. Mm. Yeah. And also um, my own merchandise, like T shirts. Um, yeah. Like I've been collecting I have close to a hundred tie dye T shirts. Mm. So I just want to put the, like my logo, mm-hmm. um, and then I also have another project that I'm hoping to work out with some rappers. Mm. Okay, yeah, with some rappers, um, like if you buy something, you can get their track. Oh, yeah. So that's something nice. I'm trying to do. Um, it's taking a while, but yeah. I I like how you're very partnership partnership focused. Uh, I mean, because it's the easiest path to growth. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it done by big brands. Yeah, definitely. Like like I can give you an example. Um, I, I partnered with um with the guy with some guys called Meaty Alliance mm-hmm. this year, so I had a project called Buy a Tea, Plant a Tree. Oh, nice! So if you buy a, a T-shirt from me, I'm gonna plant a tree. 
Mm. So Miti Alliance um, focus on like indigenous trees. Mm-hmm. So we planted a hundred trees. It was my very first project. Oh. So we planted a oh, hundred indigenous man. trees, and and also the other thing that made me really like Miti Alliance was those guys know their stuff. Mm. Um, the, and then they're actually doing it for the right reason. Yeah. And you know, and, and then Isa Brocky funded them. Wow. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow! Yeah, so I was like, these guys are really cool guys, and I met the the owner, uh, awesome guy. He's called mm. Michael. He's a mm. very awesome guy, and his vision of where he wants to to take his business. Yeah, yeah. He really challenged me, and also how I think of my business the positioning, because mm. he's 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 very professional in how mm. he position himself. Like mm. he's also partnering with um, corporates yeah. on tree planting. On he has a tree museum in mm. Nanyuki where he's growing all these indigenous trees. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's super. Um, so, yeah, you have a website. Um, just tell us the website and then also where guys can find you, where there's on socials. Okay. Um, so, so website is um, www.rhymecollection.co.ke. That's for Rhyme. Okay. And then for Maktaba, it's um, www.maktabastudio.co.ke. And then you can find me on social. So on Facebook, um, for Rhyme, it's the Rhyme Collection. Maktaba on Facebook, it's Maktaba Studio. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Instagram, it's Rhyme Collection and Maktaba Studio. I'm also on TikTok. Mm. You can find me under Rhyme Collection. Okay, yeah, super. Yeah. Uh, we should, I think you probably have to come back so we can see how, like once you're done doing the ads and stuff, yeah. then you can tell us like how to set up ad accounts, how okay. to set up such ads, okay. such and such, because I'm sure a lot of businesses would Def, be able to benefit Def. from... From that, and you're definitely a pro in that. Uh, no, <laughs> pro, pro is relative, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brahman, thanks, thanks for coming through. Likewise. Thanks for for sharing your your success, man. And thanks, I'm really thanks. happy for you. Uh, thank you, bro. Uh, good job, man. Good job. Uh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, for sure, you we'll have to have you back. Man. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye, bye.